Welcome to a new episode of The Clown Show. I've got a pizza box. That's how viewers are going to know that I'm the top G. Except, this pizza box is promoting recycling. Now I look like some kind of beta cuck. I'm just going to have to censor the label as to not dox myself. Welcome to the Matrix. We're living in a glass onion. The walrus was Paul. Where's my cigar? You have a Google alert for the word movie? I like movies. Director Ryan Johnson didn't want this one to include the A Knives Out Story subtitle, but the studio wanted to market it this way based on the success of the previous film. Knives Out was a well-cast and well-written whodunit murder mystery, which satirized class struggle with a family of wealthy, vacuous siblings clamoring over an inheritance as light was shown on all their secrets by the humble and charismatic Benoit Blanc. Though the original film introduced one of the last southern gentlemen as he quietly sat in the shadows flipping a coin, his introduction here is more humorous as he's playing Among Us in the bathtub during the pandemic, as many of us were, and he's losing. Blanc also mentions later how much he hates the game Clue. That's because it's a terrible game. The fact that this takes place during the pandemic makes me wonder if it was an in-joke that they're all drinking Corona. Glass Onion subverts the murder mystery subgenre even further than its predecessor. The audience doesn't even know who the true victim is until halfway through the film. The characters are brought together for a game of whodunit with a pompous tech billionaire on his private island, but a real murder occurs and everyone has a motive and an opportunity. Glass Onion mocks alpha male influencers, tech giants, and fashion icons as it exposes the emptiness of wealth and the complete absurdity of celebrity worship. It has even more twists and turns than the original, though the answers to its mystery are staring right at you the entire time. A key piece of information is left out at the beginning. Who summoned Benoit Blanc to the island? The identity of the person who hired Blanc was a key piece of the mystery in Knives Out as well. The writing is sharp and clever, bouncing between locations and time periods with ease as it unravels a densely layered series of mysteries centered around the empty pursuit of money and clout, all taking place before the gaze of the Mona Lisa, one of the world's most famous pieces of art. The casting is on point, the actors all shine in their roles, it's quite funny and engaging. Glass Onion gets an 8 out of 10 from me. Usually I don't care about whodunit murder mysteries, but watching all the interlocking parts come together with a healthy dose of social satire was even more satisfying on the second watch. You'll notice little details you might have missed. At first it appears that Blanc is so eager to solve a crime from pandemic-induced boredom that he solves the fake mystery the moment it begins. In reality, Benoit Blanc has been hiding the biggest mystery the entire time. A twist halfway through reveals a murder back on the mainland prior to the start of the film, which becomes the real mystery, although the characters all have minor secrets as well. Janelle Monet is sensational as she essentially plays two roles in the film. She's a character playing a character. Her sister was murdered and the killer is one of the people on the island, though none of them know about the death yet, so she disguises herself as her sister to obtain information. She even tells the group, my life was taken away by everyone in this room, but no one understands the weight of the statement at the time. There's subtext about the relationship between perception and reality, the real versus the imagined, explored throughout, as Braun's empire is all built on an illusion, fake notes on a duplicate napkin. He's an emperor with no clothes, constantly name-dropping celebrity friends so people will find him more interesting. The puzzle box, which holds the invitation to the island, plays a fugue. A partygoer explains that a fugue is a type of layered musical puzzle, like the eponymous glass onion. After the first hour of the film, the audience is allowed to witness the same events again leading up to the shooting from a different perspective. Another layer of the onion is revealed. The glass onion seems densely layered, but the truth is in plain sight. Miles Braun himself is like the glass onion, he can be seen right through. At the center, he's empty, all style and no substance. Miles Braun is the definition of hubris. He lives in a literal glass house. Braun's puzzle box was built by an apprentice for Ricky Jay. His clock strikes every hour with a sound made by Philip Glass, voiced for the film by Joseph Gordon-Levitt. His dock is a Banksy, but it's only functional at low tide. He has an expensive car sitting on his roof where it can't be driven. During the final act, the car comes crashing down, just like Tesla stock after Elon Musk bought Twitter. The mistake that Blanc makes throughout the film is assuming that Braun must be a genius because he's wealthy. 
Braun has built a company called Alpha around an idea stolen by his business partner Cassandra Brand, his theft even described as being a social network move, a la Mark Zuckerberg. At the end of the film, the characters all smash the glass figures around the room. The facade of the brilliant mind is shattered to reveal nothing but a pretentious opportunist, aka a shithead. How fast one goes from being seen as the world's smartest man to the world's biggest lol cow. You might have golden tits, but how quickly milk turns sour. The first act of the film, the audience is trying to figure out what the mystery is going to be. I assumed that Braun would be killed for real even though it was intended to be a game. The twist was not that Braun would be killed, but that he was the killer all along, playing as the victim in the game. When everyone was looking for Duke's phone, it was clearly in Braun's back pocket. Remember, he doesn't use a phone, he prefers analog. That's why he uses a fax machine like some kind of irritating hipster. He also misuses and makes up words. His whole personality is a bold-faced fabrication. Blanc's mistake in the case was making the assumption that Braun was a genius, that he was too smart to make the decisions that the killer did. He was ruled out because he wasn't an idiot, and all of the brown nosers were. The Mona Lisa plays a key role in the film. It's a symbol of Braun's wealth and power, but it's also a symbol of true art and substance, which he aspires to. He himself is a shallow individual, incapable of creating great art. Though he feels through associating with great art, he himself can be remembered as being great. Every time a phone notification goes off, the glass is raised to protect the artwork, building tension throughout the film. During the conclusion, Braun burns the lone piece of evidence that he stole the idea for Alpha from Cassandra Brand, so Helen burns the Mona Lisa in order to destroy Braun, not only financially, but to destroy his credibility as well, his fuel of the future turning his own home into the Hindenburg. At the point when his wealth and power are removed, his followers instantly turn on him. His only value was in his wealth, as there is no depth to his personality. Miles' friends are nothing more than sycophants, greedy for reflected glory from his fame and fortune, and he knows it. In fact, he abuses it. None of them are particularly intelligent, and they're all rather nasty, self-obsessed people. This group of successful friends refer to themselves as the Disruptors, a way of owning their cancellation by general society. But Blanc comes through with one of the film's most enlightened exchanges. It's a dangerous thing to mistake speaking without thought for speaking the truth. Sometimes people are cancelled by society not because of some grand conspiracy theory, but simply because they're unlikable. They're all style and no substance. It's kind of like this pizza box. A promise of delicious flavor awaits. But then you open up the box and there's nothing in it. What I'm saying is, the real mystery is, who ate all my pizza?